Thank you. I'm here to talk about substance abuse. Substance you're very familiar with. Substance you may be even addicted to it. Substance we all need to sustain life as we know. What I'm talking about, guess, water. So let's start subject water. So how much water do you really need to sustain life just for drinking purpose? A gallon a day? How much water you really use to conduct your life? Another 99 gallons a day. That's when you take washing, cleaning, you know, all those activities, flushing, and that's 100 gallons per person per day. Let me, let me take you a little different journey about unconscious use of the water. And you will be surprised. How much water do you think it takes to make a hamburger? 600 gallons. Let me continue on. 37 gallons of water to make a cup of coffee. Here we go. You will see it takes 2,500 gallons of water to make a pound of chocolate. I can keep going, yes, just watch, stay with me. <laughs> 700 gallons of water to produce a t-shirt. Here we, you want some shocking numbers? You ready? 120,000 gallons of water to manufacture a car. You know, I can keep, keep going on and on and it'll get absurd and absurd. The point is, the point is that all this water I just mentioned is food grade drinkable water. It's the water you all drink. And it's the same water being used to do all those things. Now let's, let's think about it. We have, the problem is, the problem is we have a finite amount of water on this earth. 70% of our water, we have, we have our earth's surface covered with 70% of water. But only 1% of that water is usable fresh water. We happen to be very, very fortunate just she said on the Great Lakes, where 20% of this 1% water is in our backyard in Chicago, in Great Lakes. But that doesn't mean we have a right to be abuser of this water. Water has not changed. We are using the same water dinosaurs used millions of years ago. We, we received the water, we, we received the same water when the planet inception took place. And we need to be very mindful about it what, where are we going with it? Because if we don't, if we don't do it, let me tell you what can happen. I was born in a refugee camp in India. My first 12 years of life, my family used to receive a bucket of water a day. And my ration of that bucket was one glass a day. I used to spend my whole, I spent my whole childhood seeking water, looking for water, finding water, chasing monkeys to find the streams of water, wondering how the nature cultivates, how the nature recycles the water, how the na nature deals with water and sustain the life on this planet without the massive system that we created as humans to support the supply of water to all of us and even abuse it because we are abusers. And when you think about it, then I happen to have, my family happened to be very, you know, got out of the camps. I happened to go to a prestigious engineering college in India. Right after the college, I ended up by some situation on the ships in, in the oceans of the world. Now I am surrounded by 90% of the world water supply. Still not a drop to drink. <laughs> Still not a drop to drink. I mean, it was amazing. So, <laughs> and, and so I said, well, on the ships, I learned how we recycle the water. On the ships, they do not use any water for washing and cleaning the decks or other purposes. That's all seawater to seawater. The only fresh water we generate is used for drinking and consumption, or sorry, cooking. So I said, well, and they mimic the systems of the oysters that clean 50 gallons of water a day in the oceans. You may not be aware of it. And I said, well, there's something to be learning here. We need to learn something over here with the sea. Fast forward, 
fast forward, I immigrated to the USA. Now here, now, I run an engineering company, right here in, in Chicago and other uh, states, where we, we specialize in water and wastewater treatment plants. So that tells you I know something about water and the waste of the water, both. There I started learning how we really deliver you the water. I don't know how many of you really know how the water comes to you. It comes from water treatment plants, often maybe even up to 100 miles away from the cities and municipalities they serve. It goes through a network of 1,000 miles of pipes and pumps and before it gets to your houses and the buildings. And from there, and let me, let me make this example a little more simple for you. And then from there, this is like your house. You're very familiar with it. You will see there's only two lines coming to your house. There's a clean water. You have no choice, by the way. <laughs> you know, it's not your fault. I'm just trying to let you know. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so there's a clean water line coming in, and there's a one sanitary line, we call it, that leaves all the discharge that you have. So all your shower water, all your flushing water, all your cooking water, comes all food-grade drinkable water. You can drink from your toilet bowl. You can drink in your shower. You can drink anywhere in your house, from your washing machine. That water is very clean. It's the same water from your kitchen faucet. You may use filter once in a while. So now let's see what happens after you discharge this water into the sanitary line. What happens? It goes back another hundreds of miles away with thousands of miles of piping network back to the treatment plant, discharges back to the rivers and oceans and we pollute them in the process. And this system is so old and it's leaking 20% of it. It's contaminating our water, lands, and the resources that, as we know, and we, I said, what is this? And we've been asked, as an engineering company, to repair and replace the old system, just, just keep it going, and not do anything innovative. That made me thinking. I said, going to my childhood, I said, why don't we think, why don't we make the system like the water management system of a tree? And that started the process of microgrids, thinking the microgrid instead of macro system that we all know. So microgrids, tree as you can see, have the root system, which we call the microgrid system of root, that filters, stores, and cleans, and recycles, and reuse the same water in a tree. And over the lifetime of the tree, it cleans 36,500 gallons of water to support its branches and the leaves throughout the lifetime of tree. See how much water it clean? I mean, doing a great favor to you all of you, 36,500 gallons. So now let me see if we can bring this microgrid into your own house. The house is back again. You see there's no sanitary line now. There's nothing getting out of the house. The only thing that you receive here is a fresh water just for drinking use and cooking. How much is that? Maybe two or three gallons per person a day versus 100 gallons per person a day. See how dramatic change has taken place in the system? Now everything is recycled, and even the dirtiest most water from your toilet, we call a black water, is being recycled to water your lawns and gardens because of the high fertilizer content in it. And, wow, well, wow, well, it is there. <laughs> okay, now, and, and the new purple, and the new recycled water, the color you probably all like, is a purple water, we call it. Maybe not fully food-grade drinkable water, but it's the purple water. Now, let's, let's keep going on in. Now, what happens is, we need to take this system and expand the system of microgrid I just explained to you in a single house to our cities. Because we, we have no choice. Because if you know the estimate, 70% of the world population will be living in our cities by 2050. It's, it's, it's all the data is out there. And the, all, all the abusers, substance abusers, you know, we call it. Or I call it water aholics. We are, you know, that's the term. I call it water aholics. We'll be moving to the cities. And once they move to the cities, cities may not be able to sustain the water supplies and the requirements that we will have the way we know it. So what we need to do, we need to expand this microgrid concepts to the city and, and mimic the nature's water systems in the city, in our smart cities, before the nature outsmarts us. You know, it's already outsmarting us. You can see it's happening all over. Nature is like taking over. So we need to be very mindful of preserving the nature. Let me see how the, let me show you how the, the mini grids or micro grid systems in the city will look like. 
Here we go. It will look like the mini grid systems or micro grid systems of cluster of trees in a forest. Now think about a forest, there's so many trees. Think about the cities, so many buildings. How does it look like? So when you mimic this cluster of tree or microgrid system of a tree and bring it to the cities, like in the forest, it will look something like this. So we can have our own root system under every building, a microgrid under the building to recycle, to reuse, to reduce, and the water, the wastewater I'm talking about, the water that you abuse, the water that you don't need to go for drinking or cooking. The water you just need for washing and cleaning and all other non-food grade drinkable purposes. Because the water, and for that, this will reduce. Now I told you how massive the system is, how wasteful that system is, how old that system is. And this system takes that away. You see a little one macro system, there's one line coming from our treatment plants just for drinking water use only, for food grade drinkable water. And when you, rest of the water is being recycled, just like the roots of the tree, and re clean, stored, recycled, serving back to the building for non-drinkable use, like fire protection systems, sprinkler system, even your fountains, cleaning the streets. I mean, think about why you want to clean the street from a drinking water. Why you want to have a fire protection system with a drinking water? It's supposed to only fire the fight, you know, <laughs> fight the fire. So given that, this system is what we need to have. Because if all these people are migrating to cities, you know, water aholics, and you can then have a water alcoholism because you can drink as much you want and don't waste that you don't need for drinking or cooking purpose. That's the point here. And this system will be so efficient, it can save 30% of your energy and recover 50% of the water supply, which is so pressure, because it's a substance we need to sustain, not to get high on. So this is the something we need to really understand very, very clearly. So given that, now this technology does exist. I recently went to Israel on a mission with Ram Emanuel, the mayor of over here, and I personally drank recycled beverage over there. They clean this wastewater so good. It's, it's a food grade level over there because they are not fortunate to have the water supplies like we have in the Great Lakes or the rivers. So they recycle everything. They have no choice. Now some areas in California also, they're bringing this, this recycling system. They're taking the wastewater, they're taking industrial waste and recycling as a purple water, which I just explained to you going back to agricultural use, industrial use, or non-drinkable uses over there. So the point is, the point is that if we need to be very mindful about it, we need to be in sync with the nature, we need to have in our smart cities water system like the nature does with the trees or the oysters do in the oceans. And because you don't do it, if you don't do it, this away from the macro system, going to the micro system, I am afraid, very afraid, there will be a generation of humans coming who will be facing the struggle I faced living on one glass of water. Thank you.